Hey, art nerds! Yesterday, I showed you how to draw a magnolia. Today, we're going to be drawing springtime daffodils. This is part of my How to Draw Flowers series, and I hope you guys are enjoying our May flowers. So this is the reference image that I'm primarily using. I am referencing some other images as well, and I'm going to put a link to the original source down in the description below. The materials we're using today are fairly simple. We're using a Blick Studio watercolor pad. We're using a mechanical pencil with H lead, and we're using a Sakura Pigma FB brush pen. I'll have links to all of those down in the description below as well. So we are using watercolor paper because I have a follow-up how to paint flowers series. So if you're interested in drawing and painting flowers, it's a good reason to subscribe if you're not subscribed already and make sure you click that bell notification so YouTube lets you know when we update. So to begin, we're going to be drawing two daffodils today. So I drew two placement circles. This is allowing us to figure out the composition. I drew a crosshair in each of the the circles and then I drew a smaller circle in the center or the approximate center of each of our circles. Now the one on the left I also added kind of a conical shape since when you look at the center of daffodils they have kind of that burr, burr, trumpet horn going on. So daffodils have six petals. We have our three let's call them key petals because they're the petals that are closest to the viewer and then we have three background petals that are overlapped by our key petals. So you're going to end up with something that kind of looks like a toxic sign overlapped on top of another toxic sign. Then for our background flower, ideally if you're new to drawing flowers, you're going to want to draw in the petals that are being covered by our foreground flower just to kind of help establish that and help get everything in place. But I thought that might be too many lines on the paper and a little bit confusing for you guys. So I opted not to do that. So now we have kind of our basic daffodil shapes in place. I'm drawing a line down the center of each of our petals because daffodils, if you guys look closely, have kind of a vein going up the petals and then there's creases surrounding that. I've also drawn the ruffled crenellations going around the center and now I'm adding in some lines to help give the viewer an idea of the crenellations and how they're going towards the center of the flower itself. I've also gone ahead and drawn in the pistils. Now that I have my flowers drawn, I'm going to draw the stems and I'm offsetting them slightly since if you look at a daffodil from the side, you'll notice that the head protrudes at like a right angle from the stem. And I want to make sure I capture that. I also drew in the leaves and the leaves are very similar to the leaves we drew for like the daylily. So next we're going to ink this. We're using a Sakura Pigma FB brush pen. So this is going to be waterproof. And that ties in very well with our How to Paint Flowers series coming up. And I'm starting with the pistils in the center and I'm basically inking them in a way that makes them kind of look a little bit like coffee beans. I've been working really heavily from our reference the whole time, drawing what I see, not just what I think I see, and not just working from memory since I'm building up a mental library of different flowers. And this video has been sped up by about two times. So don't worry if you don't draw this fast. That's perfectly normal. I don't draw this fast. And whenever you're learning to draw a new thing, it does take a little bit longer to find your feet. I also went ahead and I started inking the crenellations in the center. And now I'm inking the striations, the lines that are going from the very frilly tippy top of the flower to the center of the flower. I also went ahead and I inked the stems on the stamen and the pistils. And if you're not confident with your inking, you can use a solid black line applying pressure. If you're a little bit more confident with your inking, you can do two very light lines. And I do apologize that my, my camera has decided to lose focus right here. Perhaps my camera needs some help for its ADHD just as I might need some help for mine. Uh, everyone in this family has focus issues I guess. Unfortunately it does make it a little bit more difficult to see but haha -ha, the problem has resolved. So you guys can see we're using some line variation. We are adding some ruffles to the daffodil petals. It's really going to depend on your reference daffodil. Some petals are more roughly than others in different variations. And there's a lot of variations when it comes to daffodils. We are drawing that center vein. And then we're adding some striations at the bottom, kind of coming from the center of the petal. And then a few at the top as well. And that's going to help give kind of an idea of the form that these petals are taking. So 
So that's our first daffodil inked. Now we're gonna move on to inking the second. If you guys have any questions either about drawing daffodils, inking flowers, or just drawing flowers in general, let me know down in the comments below or join me some Saturday night for our Power Hour live stream. It's a weekly art workshop that's free to the public, held live, come hang out, paint along, draw along, and just generally have a chill good time. So we are working from front to back. We're working from objects that are overlapping to objects that are being overlapped. And that's why we ink the entirety of our foreground flower before moving on to the background flower. But our order of operations remains pretty much the, st the same. We ink the stamen and the pistils first, then we ink the frilly, crillin frilly crinolations around the cone of our daffodil, Boy, is that a tongue twister to say. Then we move on to our key petals, that is the petals that are overlapping. And then we move on to the petals that are being overlapped. And one of the reasons I love using brush pins is with just a little bit of extra pressure or easing up on the pressure just a little bit, you get a lot of nice line weight variation. And that really lends itself to drawing organic forms like flowers. Okay, so we've got our flowers inked. Now all that's left is to ink the stems and the leaves. And when we're inking the stems and the leaves, you wanna pull each stroke in one go. So you wanna ink from your shoulder, ideally, but if you can't ink from your shoulder, you wanna ink from your elbow and pull those lines as smoothly as possible. You may even have to move your arm significantly to get the line as nice as you would like. We added a few striations just to create some shadow and to give some form and to give some texture to the leaves and to the stems. That about wraps up this daffodil tutorial. Hopefully I'll see you guys again really soon with another how to draw flowers video. Bye.